You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, hosted by Joey and Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air and it's heard on WNOV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 FM in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM, Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, we're going to talk about the right ways to build raised beds in your gardens to get the best out of them, as well as reasons why we've never tilled our garden. We grow in the ground, and we're going to go over the reasons why we've chose to not till, and they may influence you to do the same, as well as our guest, Maya Toll. She's an herbalist and an author. We're going to talk about herbs and how they're much more than just seasoning your chicken. Plus, we'll tackle all of your garden questions. The hour's jam-packed, so we really should get started, like, right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, or listening in uh, Banning, California, or listening anywhere via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website under the radio tab. So glad you've taken time, or you may be listening through podcast replay or in-studio video replay. We thank you for taking time to do that. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, gardening partner, Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at our website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where you can find over 1,300 garden videos, short and long format, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, podcasts of this show, and in-studio video of this show. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is... Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently and with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Incre- increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA. We offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the fi- size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. There's a, there's a number of ways in which you can contact us uh, and they all ro- revolve around the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields prune and damage and surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can call at any time. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 plant guard paint email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line, and that's 414-368. 9311. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG or Twitter handle is at TWVG show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. We're going to get in the program here and we're going to talk about reasons why we, we're going to start with reasons why we do not till our garden. Now you may be an avid tiller. You may till twice a week and three times on Sunday, but we're not trying to convert you over to being a non-tiller, we're just going to cover the information on why we choose not to till, and it may enlighten you to the reasons that you may choose to follow that particular method of not tilling, or minimal amount of tilling. Now, we don't till our garden, and it's not because we don't have access to a tiller. We could definitely buy one, or rent one, or borrow one. That's not the reason. One is that A major one is that tilling can create major weed problems. And so what that means is that when you're tilling, there's many weeds in your garden, and weeds can propagate on their own, which means that if you cut them up, they can take that little tiny one-inch cutting and start to grow another weed. Yeah, it, it, it propagates very, very quickly. So, yes, the garden may be very pretty. We till. Everything's great. Two weeks later, we have three to four more times more weeds than what we had to begin with. And we try to figure out why, and that's the reason why a lot of these roots will propagate from very small cuttings. And another way that it brings more weeds is that it takes the weed seeds that have laid dormant, it circles them around in your soil, and brings them up to the light. And one way that we prevent that is we try to practice minimal soil disturbances. 
then that means that when we plant in our garden, we don't turn the soil over a lot. We don't uh, purposely go in there and spade the soil. We did at one point to set it up, um, but then as we plant, we're very careful about not disturbing the soil. Well, and we do have to, to weed with a garden fork uh, on occasions, and when we harvest crops like potatoes or Jerusalem artichokes or yakuns or soil disturbance, but we want to uh, not just do uh, anything unnecessary to the so- soil because we're one of mimicking. We don't want to mimic nature. Right. Um, and then also t- tilling creates this problem of bare soil. And so if you go into nature, you if you go take a hike or walk in a park and you look into the woods, especially this time of year when the brush and whatnot is not filled in, you'll see that, there, that the, the dirt is not uncovered. All the soil is covered with leaves and um, just debris and things like that. So we're mimicking that in our garden. So every fall we dump a whole bunch of leaves on our soil. We also put things like pine needles and also even straw sometimes. Right. With the pine needles, we want to... They, they don't break down nearly as quick as the leaves do. The leaves, we put them on in the fall. By June, they're all dissipated and gone, uh, and, and it feeds the soil. The pine needles will take a little longer, but they don't make the soil acidic as people may believe. So, And then also leaving the soil bare... Um, allows for the the weeds to get the sunlight. So if you mulch, then you help kind of prevent some of those weeds having access to sunlight. Well, and not only when we till do we chop up roots of weeds that propagate, but we expose the seeds of weeds that have been laying dormant under the soil, and some can be 50, 80 years. Yeah, they can be dormant for 50, sometimes even 100 years, so something in that range. Um, Also, when you don't when you don't mulch and when you uh, when the bare soil is exposed, that does dry out quickly, and so that way mulching and not turning the soil over as and much. You have to helps. water more. Yes, yeah, so you have to water more. Um, tilling destroys the soil structure. Healthy soil is all about structure. So your soil in your garden, as we always talk about building your soil, there's a lot of things in your soil. There's um, a whole ecosystem. There's microorganisms. There's worms. There's good bacteria. There's some. There's some bad bacteria. There's fungi, um, and then there's also other microorganisms that break down what's in your soil. And there's organic matter, water, air, things like that. So when you do that, tilling will kind of shake up or destroy that symbiotic process. And so since your soil is alive, we don't see the need to disturb that. When we don't have to. Soil uh, compaction. Okay. So every time you walk near the plants in your garden, you compress the soil, especially if um, if you walk along, maybe if, if you're walking between the plants. So what we do is we have designated walking areas and designated growing areas. And you can do this if you till your garden. That's not a, an issue. Um, you can make walk paths and things like that. But as you... As you pulverize your soil, it is more susceptible to being compacted. So, yes, you're turning your soil over with a tiller, but you're also making it more susceptible to be being compacted because you're adding, I think, almost too much air, and then that doesn't work. So if you don't walk on it, and if you don't till it, it naturally makes its own nice, loose, loamy components. Right. You want to have that natural break or natural structure of the soil and not have dense soil does not grow plants. Compacted soil does not grow plants. Even if you have good and rich soil in your area, in your garden, if it's compacted, it's not going to grow because the roots can't penetrate through it. It can be the, the greatest compost in the world. So we want to avoid that and ha- and with any garden, you want to try to figure out, like we have, distinct walk paths and permanent grow areas, which work has, has worked very well. And the benefit to having that grow area, walk path grow area, it's easier to maintain as well. You only have to, you know, 30 square feet here or 20 square feet here. You don't have a, a psychological, psychologically, look at all of this I have to do today. Yeah, you, you can break can, it you down. Can break it down. Also, when you're walking behind your tiller, you're walking on what you tilled. So you're also adding compaction to that. Another thing is tilling can delay your planting season. A lot of people say, oh, I wish I could go out in my garden, but it's too wet. My soil is too wet to till. Because you can't till in muddy soil. You're not, you shouldn't plant shouldn't plant in muddy soil, but if the soil is decently moist, you can plant in it. 
Um, and then, but you couldn't, there's like last week we planted peas in soil that I don't think you could have tilled in it, um, but you definitely could plant in it. And, and, you know, as we said before, we're not trying to convert you to being a non-tiller uh, or non, not tilling your soil, but we're just giving you the facts and the figures of what happens when you do till your soil. Another thing is people will till their soil and they think they're turning that grass or those weeds in underneath and that's going to help kind of bury them and subdue them. And that's not true because the same thing, a few months later, you're just going to have a lot of weeds. Well, you're chopping the roots up, and not only are you dumping it in. So oh. we're not saying you're not saying you're wrong to till. This is just why. Well, what why about we if we till? have worms and we till? What what do we do? You know, we there, there are probably people listening that till regularly, but they don't want to have a lot of worm death. So what does one do if they do want to practice the tilling? Well, worms are smart. They sense vibrations. So if they feel like, especially when it rains, if you ever notice that the the not so smart worms usually end up on the sidewalk or your driveway or whatever uh, but the smart ones go they go below the soil so what you could do is you could take your tiller run it for like what a minute or so what do you think yeah, three or four three or three four, four minutes, minutes yeah. um next to your garden and then those worms will go beneath the soil and then the smart ones or the smart ones would the the dumb ones not so much yeah natural selection i think that's what that's called yeah that's kind of like if we just tore the warning labels off of everything. Right. Yeah. So there, there, there's the reasons why we choose not to till. It's not because we don't have access to a tiller or we don't want to rent one, but we understand the soil structure and understand what can occur in the soil if we do till. Now, growing up on the farm, uh, we tilled all the time. That's just what we did. Uh, not, And I don't know if it was because we didn't know any better or it was just a practice in which we felt was efficient for the time we had available. Well, I think people just tell because that's what they did, that's what their family did, that's what their neighbors do. And I think I've had to explain this to people. Uh, friends, coworkers are like, you don't tell your garden? No, we do not tell our garden. Well, what do you do? And then I have to explain this is how we do it. And they're like, well, if you put the leaves on, how do the leaves get into the soil? And, I say, and some people till you know, the they, leaves in. Yeah, they yeah. sow the leaves in. And I explain that they break down the worms. We have a ton of worms in our garden, and it helps bring that organic matter into the soil. So that's one benefit is if you have a ton of worms in your garden, those worms are looking for food. They come, they, if they want food, they get the food. And so when you put when we put our leaves on the, gar- on the garden in the fall, the worms come and they find that food. They help break it down, and they help circulate through the soil. Worms can circulate things from up to 8 feet deep in your soil soil all the way to the top so they circulate all of that within your soil and that's why we choose not to till because we want that beneficial we have about 30 worms per cubic square foot recommendations are about 9 to 12 worms is what you should have per um, square foot of soil in your garden uh, when it comes to the health and well-being of the soil in your garden well when we come back we are going to talk about Building raised beds and doing it correctly. There's several different mechan- uh, many things that people do wrong. We're going to show you how to do it right. You can certainly send us an email at twvgshow at gmail.com at any time with your garden questions. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trades with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Dermaceuticals essential oils are high-grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit Dharmaceuticals.com. 
Colonics Universal Pectin is high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash. Patients. Use the handle as a measuring device. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. In order to space your seeds better, turn a long-handled tool into a measuring stick by laying it down next to a measuring tape and transcribing the measurements, then sealing it nice and tight with a piece of clear packing tape. New New Natural Healing Ointment, USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel-filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use. For indoor and outdoor use, saves time and money, lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. World coolestraingauge.com Need I say more? Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S. Eco Garden Systems raised garden bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound. Quick and easy to set up. Maintain and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up and back Backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills 4930 West Loomis Road 414-282-4220 The Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden City Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Well, you guys are like internet rock stars. With your hosts, Joey and Kelly Baird. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, organic, friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they're a the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or 
or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soil, soils, insects controlled, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principle of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit our DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. There's many ways to garden, raised beds, traditional ground garden containers. We're going to go over the right way in which you can build your raised bed gardens. Now, before we get into this, we do want to make aware that RootMaker.com, one of the sponsors of the show here, they provide large grow beds uh, in raised bed or, uh, uh, grow bags up to 60 gallons, as well as 2 foot by 4 foot by 12 inches high and 4 foot by 4 foot by 12 inches high. And those are like a pop-up raised pop-up bed. Raised bed. They're made with like they have the the regular uh, grow bag material, but then they have these little PVC pipe frames, and it's heat so, tempered yes. so it, it keeps the soil cooler. So, so if you don't want to build a raised bed, but you want the concept of a raised bed, they certainly have that available. So let's talk about what the material that we should plant or should build our raised beds with. We have three different categories here. We've got treated lumber, untreated lumber, and red cedar. Uh, that's your big three. Now you can make your you can make a raised bed with taking logs and and framing it in. Uh, but most people shy so away. Back in the 90s, yes. it was treated with arsen- arsenic. And that's changed. Um, and it's treated with something called ACQ. It's al- al- alkaline copper quaternary. And so it meets the same standards as like the arsenic for above ground and ground contact. But it's safer. Um, it's safe for using um, for like a raised bed. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you want to... Um, if you don't like the way it looks, you can paint the outside, and we've done that. Um, and also, you could... It's um, its something that is, is safe as opposed to the, the wood that was... Some true. people say that the copper can still not be great for... And leaching. Mm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's the thing. That's you know, thing. you got to think about that. Are you taking your tomato and rubbing it against the wood? Right. No. It's, right. it's a personal thing, but we're just giving and you the information. Also, it's good to know that soil has a buffering capacity. Right. So that means that it's going to, I mean, obviously, you don't want to spray this a ACQ stuff in your soil directly, but if it's coming into contact, that soil is going to help kind of buffer out some of the, the possible harm. Now, the obviously, the, the, the best mechanism uh, material would be the untreated lumber. Um, that's that's it. Now the the red the red the cedar is more expensive, but it lasts almost forever. It's a rot resistant wood, so that's another option which you uh, may want to look at going to. So the height in which we want to build these raised beds. Now, if you're not doing any root crops, eight inches, uh, a two by eight uh, size, two inches wide by eight inches high, uh, would be would be fine. Uh, if you're going to do something like carrots or parsnips or something like that nature, 10, 12 inches. Some people even go 16, 18 I inches. I would say, high. yeah. I mean, it kind of depends on where you live. If you're in the upper Midwest, you can get with 12 inches just yeah. fine. If you are to, uh, maybe like California where you have a longer growing season, you might want to think about doing something like 16 to 18 inches. Or some people, make, some people do 20, 24 inches because they put a little uh, lip on the raised bed and they can set on it as they yeah. work. That's nice, too. Um, so that's one thing you want to think about if, if you are building your raised bed and it's going to be taller, especially. You want to think about how far you can reach across. So we say probably don't want to make it more than four feet across. Total area, width. Total width. Yeah. Or width, yeah. width, yeah. So that way you can reach at least two feet towards the middle on either side. Because we don't want, uh, we're putting good soil in this raised bed. You don't want to be falling and, into your raised Right, bed. and now we've got it eight feet wide and we can't get to the center, so we're stepping in the bed. We've, we've went backwards on why we're doing a raised bed. And I think it just looks nice, too, if you line them up and then you have them all kind of um, maybe t- four by eight or something like that. It's definitely. And it doesn't have, and the length can be as long as you want. Yeah. It can be 16, 32, 64 feet, whatever. It's the width is the, the important portion of this because we want to be able to reach and not step in and compress the soil that we've brought in to to feed the, the to grow in, the, the good soil. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So um, so you want to think about the width and then the length. And, and, now, the, and, and before we go any further, we talk, we, there will be weeds in this bed. Even though you're bringing in good compost, 
weed seeds blow in, they fall from the sky, birds and everything else, but it'll be a minimal amount of weeds that we have to uh, do. Okay, so then you also want to think about um, irrigation. Maybe you don't have irrigation set up yet. Or well, you don't, you don't think you're don't going, think you're to. going to. But, but a lot of people, they build these raised beds and then... They, it's, a, it's kind of an investment to oh, build yes. the raised beds. And then maybe next year you want irrigation. You This is your first time. And then you're like, well, I could have used irrigation this year. And so then maybe next year you want to invest whatever, save up, Christmas gift, whatever, and get irrigation. And the year, and, and the raised beds, yes, you talked about an investment. It's not something, you know, you're going to have to put money up front, soil, uh, materials. But what you're going to get is an instant garden, Good production because you've got good soil you've brought in. It's worth the investment, just like anything in life. You invest a little bit, you get the reward back, uh, and it will pay for itself year after year. And next oh, year, sure, yeah. yeah, I mean, you don't have to do really any soil disturbance like we talked about in the first segment. You don't have to till these things. You can add, you know, top it off with new compost each year. But other than that, the garden's ready to go. Boom, done, ready to go. So we've talked about the uh, sizing heavy raised beds, how wide you want to make them. So you want to think about your spacing. So you don't want to, another thing is you don't want to jam these beds so close together that you can't get maybe a lawnmower or a wheelbarrow between them. And also, if, if your raised bed is only 12 inches high, you might want to sit next to your raised bed. So you want to give yourself about two to three feet so that you can sit next to it if you need to or kneel next to it and are able to um, access it properly. The other advantage to having that two to three foot, I would say three foot, three foot to four foot width is when if you grow tomatoes or you grow a vine crop next to the edge, it gives you a little more walk space because at the peak of the summer, these things are going to be very large and can close up the walk paths that you have. So we want to have plenty of space for air circulation for you to go in and pick that you're not ch- digging through a forest to get to the, the produce in which you're trying to harvest. Definitely. So... Um you want you don't want to add your garden soil. Yeah, never do that. You're and just, the reasons why. Okay, so one is that you're just basically adding weeds. You're not accomplishing what the goal is that you set forth for yourself. And also, if your soil's garbage, then you're just adding garbage soil to your raised bed. Which is why we're trying to build a raised bed, because we don't have good soil to grow in to begin with. Well, and some people do it for ease of access and things like that. Yeah. They like the way it looks. but Or because they don't want to work their soil or build their soil. So you want to reach out to your local garden center. Like in Milwaukee, we have Blue Mills. And they have a mix in bulk that you can fill the beds with. And you can do this yourself. We took, uh, we've filled up, you know, our cars, our four-door smaller cars and just use buckets and bags yeah buckets and bags they will deliver they will deliver um but that's something that you want to think about uh yeah find your local just don't because here's the 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 advantage of buying in bulk essentially and i'm not this is not mathematically accurate to the actual cent but for what it would cost to buy four cubic feet of soil in uh, compost or, or raised bed mix in a bag you can buy a quarter yard in bulk for nearly the same price because of the advantage of the bulk material. So find your local garden center, your local independent garden center. They will have a mix for uh, raised beds or containers. Or Yeah, like a landscape supply, yeah. something like that. So Yeah, yeah and, and they will have what you need. Phylum Bioproducts also has what you need when it comes to controlling Japanese beetles in your yard. Are you looking to control common insect pests like Japanese beetles, weevils, borers, various beetles and their larvae without harming the good insects? Phylum Bioproducts is just that with potent and environmentally safe biological pest control products. It is the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both adult and larva stages of susceptible pets. And unlike the chemical products, Phylum's line of products do not pose a risk to beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinators that exist with those chemical products. Therefore, you can now achieve control rates that you expect from the chemical insecticides without doing harm to the rest of the environment. Visit phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. It's organic and it works. Don't go anywhere. My toll herbalist and author will be with us right after this. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Use Twitter to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG. 
Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter Earth Auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural liquid biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at Amazon.com. Search Soil Diva. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available in mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit BobX.com. B O B B. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Potatoes are a staple in most backyards. Knowing how to grow them successfully makes all the difference. It's time for this week's Michigan Garden Moment. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Potatoes come in all colors and varieties. You have early season potatoes that are 70 to 90 days to maturity, mid season potatoes, 90 to 100. 110 days or late season 120 to 135 days to reach maturity based on your growing conditions. You can grow them in the ground in a trench then hill the soil over. You can do a no dig method or you can grow them in containers. Methods like the potato tower are proven ineffective and just simply wrong and do not work. So don't waste your time on that particular method. You can look up the different methods but the key here is you can uh, take your potatoes and allow them to sprout or or you can plant them as a whole potato. The advantage to sprouting the potatoes, allowing you to see where the sprouts are and allowing you to divide the potato to get more seed potatoes. You want to plant your potatoes when the soil temperature is no colder than 45 degrees, preferably 50 degrees at root zone if you're doing in a trench. You can get away a little bit uh, flexible more with the temperature if you're doing a no-dig method and piling yard debris or straw on top of the potatoes. You want to harvest your potatoes no earlier than 10 weeks after you have planted them. You'll get the new potatoes or baby potatoes. And you can wait until the plant reaches a mature state and it begins to die back. Then you can harvest your potatoes. Don't leave them in the ground too long. If they get wet for a long period of time, they'll rot. It happened to us. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Gardener.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marble that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight-line, perfectly spaced rows 
rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. For those of you who were not at Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center this past Thursday when we talked on growing vegetables and herbs, you missed out on a really good talk, and we appreciate all of those who did come to our talk, and we want to welcome them to our, gar- our radio community. Yeah, thanks for coming to our talk and listening in. And we just want to remind you all that have not been to Blue Mills, they have some really good products. They have really knowledgeable staff. You should go. You should go. They have a ton of landscape supplies. 40 varieties of bulk materials, sand, gravel, mulch, compost. They have sod that's ready to go, as well as they'll be getting their vegetables in here, as well as their spring kickoff May 4th. We'll be there as well. You can go to 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. That's just south of Layton. Call 414-282-4220 or go to bluemills.com. This is horticulturist Jessica Walliser from SavvyGardening.com and KDKA Radio in Pittsburgh. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Let's go to the Ivy Organics 31 Plant Guard Hotline, Holly, and bring in our next guest. Maya Toll is an herbalist, storyteller, a floraste, and a woman's wisdom mentor. Show or open her natural product shop, herbary.com, after returning from a year long apprenticeship with a traditional healer in Ireland. She's a registered herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild and teaches across the globe. She has a new book out entitled The Illustrated Herbiary Guidance and Rituals from 36 Bewitching Botanical. Welcome to the program, Maya. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to join us on the program. Enlighten us, not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. Well, enlighten you about? (laughs) Well, I want to start out with, uh, we understand what an author is, but you're also an herbalist. What is the definition of an herbalist, and what what do you do as an herbalist? First off, I think it's, it's probably important to let your listeners know that there's no one definition as an herbalist, of an herbalist. Um, my personal definition is someone who works with herbs. So that's a really broad definition that allows people who are gardening with herbs, cooking with herbs, using herbs as medicine to think of themselves as an herbalist. Uh, you can get more specific. There's something called a clinical herbalist, which is someone who's using herbs as medicine and helping other people to regain their health in that way. Well, okay. Uh, herbs are becoming very popular, and uh, as herbs come an back... Herbal, it's an herbal comeback. An herbal so comeback, say. yeah. But you disagree. You say herbs have always been there. Why do you say that? Um, because they have. If you, you know, if you go back in our history, you'll find people like Pliny, Plato, Aristotle, our earliest philosophers are talking about how to use herbs as medicine. Hippocrates, who's considered the father of medicine, used herbs and said, let your food be your medicine, right? And that's, that's where the herbs come in. So in America, we had a time period where we lost using herbs as medicine, and we're having a revival here, but if you go to China, India, Japan, Europe, they didn't have that big gap that we have here. Well, and that's the interesting thing. The Asian uh, continent or community, they understand how certain herbs affect the body and how they can combat certain uh, un- unhealthy elements. And, and us here in North America have just kind of go, well, we'll just go to the doctor when we have a problem. Exactly. <laughs> so, so there's a bit of economic history there. Absolutely, um, yeah. Continue, yes, yeah. go ahead. So, 
Yeah. So in the late 1800s, if you needed medical care, you had a wide array of choices. You could go to doctors who used herbs, doctors who used homeopathy, and the people that we now consider doctors were called surgeons. And what they did was they cut you open. That was what, you know, their specialty was. As we came into the Industrial Revolution and we began to understand how to extract specific chemical constituents from plants and also how to make synthetic chemical constituents, our robber barons, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, Carnegie, saw a big opportunity. And Rockefeller in particular stepped in, helped the American Medical Association come into being. And then he did something really sneaky tricky, which changed the course of our history here. He hired a public relations guy named Flexner, and Flexner claimed to be a medical doctor. And he went to all the different universities that were teaching medicine, and they were teaching herbs and homeopathy and surgery and all the different aspects. And he had them do um, evaluation, and he then did write-ups, which he took to Congress, and he claimed that the herbalism and the homeopathy were snake medicine and didn't work. And if you actually look at the records from the time, there were some pretty big flus going around, and the, the records actually show that the homeopaths were the ones who were treating it really successfully, not the people who are now our doctors. Those were the surgeons, right? But because Carnegie and Rockefeller saw this opportunity to produce medicine, patented medicine, you can't patent a plant, they kind of steered our Congress in that direction, and they used this Flexner report, which was written by this fake doctor, Flexner, um, as the basis for that uh, conversion. It's definitely interesting. Now, I like to make my own homegrown herbal, herbal tea. We've used lemon balm, lemon grass, our own dehydrated pears from our pear tree. What is the correct way to make herbal tea, and why do you feel that's better than normal tea? So, normal tea, like what we normally call tea, is usually black tea. And black tea is from a plant, um, so it is, it is technically herbal. And it's an antioxidant, so there's nothing wrong with black tea. But if you want that the chemical constituents from a plant so that it has healing power, then you need a much longer sweep. You need a minimum of 20 minutes. For instance, if you're making lemon balm tea, you pour your hot water over, you let it infuse for at least 20 minutes. If you want to get a really strong infusion, you pour your hot water over, you let it sit for 20 minutes, and then you pop it in the fridge for a couple of hours, even overnight. Because then what you're doing is you're getting both a hot infusion and a cold infusion, and different chemical constituents within the plant are going to be extracted by the hot heat and different ones by the cold. Very interesting. Uh, people just, and, and we've seen it, and, and I'm sure you have, oh, five minutes, good enough, let's drink the tea, but you lose so much of what your, intending, your intentions are to get out of that herbal tea. But typically with, like, black tea or green tea or even, like, um, the white tea, they say you don't want to oversteep it because it can make it bitter, but this, but this is different because it's the herbal tea. It's the herbs as opposed to something like a leaf tea, like black, uh, green, or white tea. Is that correct? Well, it's a little, that's a little murky. So <laughs> most of your herbal teas are leaf teas, right? They're from the leaves of the herbs. When you're drinking a black tea, a green tea, tea or a white tea, usually you're drinking it for taste, not for its medicinal properties. Okay. So, you know, what you're doing is you're saying, I don't want it bitter because I want it to taste good. Um, there's a chemical called a tannin, and that comes out the longer you steep it, and that's part of what makes it dry and bitter. But with the herbal teas, you're saying, I want the medicine from this even if it doesn't taste as great as I would like. 
That so it might get better. That, that makes sense. Some, sometimes in yeah. life, the worst taste and stuff is the best for us. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the benefits of plants that you can grow in your garden. You talk about some of these in the book uh, uh, without giving too much information away. So let's talk about rosemary, roses, and dandelions, uh, which people kind of have their own pers- uh, perspective on. But what are some of the benefits for, for the rosemary, roses, and dandelions? Yeah, so I, I do want to just set up the book a little bit. Yes, yes, let's talk about that. Yeah, so the book deals with more of um, what we call the energetic properties of the plant. So um, if you remember the Victorians, they used to exchange posies of plants, and each plant had its own meaning. So each plant still has its own meaning and its own vibe, and that's what the book's about. There are so many wonderful medicinal herbals out there, I didn't feel the need to write another one. So I can talk a little bit about medicinal properties of the three plants you mentioned, but don't expect to find that in the book. What you'll find is the purely energetic properties. So when I talk a little bit about, about the personalities, that's what's in the book. And, and it's it, so. it, it's a re- and we've looked we've read the book and it's a really interesting aspect of covering uh, 36 different. Um, categories uh, when it comes to you know like you said you weren't going to write another book about herbs and how to use them but more about the you know uh, story behind them I guess is the best way to describe it yeah yeah so uh, with the plants you mentioned rosemary has traditionally been used for memory um, both in terms of drinking rosemary tea there's actually been studies with the essential oil from rosemary, you get some of that in the tea, but you also get it if you buy a bottle of essential oil and put a drop on your hands, rub it together, and smell it. Um, but rosemary increases blood to the brain, and it's very helpful for short-term memory. So if you're taking a test, you can use a little rosemary to help you through it. In terms of its personality, it's been used traditionally to say, remember me. So if you put a sprig of that in your bouquet, you'd be saying, remember me, don't forget me. So you, if you put rosemary with rose, your message would be, I love you and don't forget me. Because rose is an herb for the heart. It's actually what I give to people when they're in grief. Uh, I'll give them like a rose petal elixir, which is a very sweet rose syrup that they can put a few drops in their black tea if they want or their seltzer or just on their tongue. Um, but also I sometimes will give people a rose bush to put in their garden, which is a lovely way to commemorate um, a lost love. And then we have dandelion, which you mentioned, which I feel like that's everyone's garden, Darth Vader, right? Nobody wants the dandelion invasion. But dandelions are incredible internal medicine. The, the leaves are very supportive for our kidneys, and the roots are very supportive for our liver. Um, and the plant, you know, you can probably figure this out if you're a gardener, the, the energetic medicine is tenacity. <laughs> that plant is not going away. It comes up through cracks in the sidewalk. Um, dandelion somehow manages to survive no matter what we do, and it does it cheerfully. So good medicine for all of us. That's fantastic. Now, where can our listeners find out more about you and get your book? So my website is Maya Toll, which is M-A-I-A-T-O-L-L dot com. And the book is available from most book re- resellers. So you can go to your local shop or if you want to hop online, you know, all of the major resellers are carrying the book. 
Well, it's a very unique, different type of book that our listeners are probably not familiar with that's out there, but it, tell, it has a lot of information that is very entertaining and educational about 36 different plants that uh, you've covered in the book. Yes, and the illustrations are fabulous. Absolutely. Maya, we greatly appreciate you taking time and joining us on the program and educating Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great day. You too. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom-made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color. Weather resistant, energy efficient to save on that heating cost. Mix and match with glazings to suit your climate. Sturdy and durable, they'll hold up to those heavy snow loads. They'll even add them to homes. For agricultural to lodging to entertaining, it's a great addition to any garden or landscape. Check them out at Wisconsin. GreenhouseCompany.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products. Unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at ShieldandSeal.com. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the backbreaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. Com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. 
Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The important job of weeds? It's time for this week's Garden Fun Fact. Weeds are simply nature's way of covering up bare soil. They're genetically designed to germinate, propagate, and grow faster than most of your garden plants. Use a natural mulch such as shredded leaves or dry, chemical-free, seed-free grass clippings to cover that bare soil to prevent weeds from growing. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. You didn't mention that I was a sailboat trailer expert. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're coming here, and there was this trailer, and I didn't know what it was. And I said, oh, that's a sailboat trailer, which I didn't know that you had any knowledge of sailboat expertise whatsoever. Well, I've grown up by water my whole life, okay. so uh, I know things. Well, I know tractors, so there you go. Okay. With your hosts, Joey and Halle Baird. If you want to get a hold of us, you can certainly do that by uh, the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard hotline uh, connection. Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damage and sunburn. Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields prune and damage surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is not toxic and environmentally safe. And organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. Forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. We had a number so, of questions come in this week from all social media platforms. I have a shady balcony in our home that receives only direct morning sunlight. Do you think I could grow rhubarb over there? Also, I'm in zone 11. Well, uh, rhubarb grows in zone 2 to 8 here in uh, the Milwaukee Upper Midwest. We're between five, 4 and uh, not, uh, 4 Where's and zone 6. 11? That's Southern California, oh, okay. Southern Texas, Arizona, that area. Mm. So, rhubarb can grow in zone 2 to 8. It requires extensive chill period below 40 degrees Fahrenheit in order to produce the stems. Uh, after winter. Uh, it can be grown as an annual from seed in zones 9, 10, and 11, but the stalks will be small and uh, less robust. So uh, the answer to your question is you could, but it's not going to be uh, worth your effort in order to get um, the, that uh, rhubarb that you're hoping to get that you find in the store. So some of our herbs and other plants as well as flowers were attacked by those Japanese beetles last year. What do you suggest to keep those away? I know those traps can um, are available, um, but what else can you suggest? Well, yeah, the traps are available, and if you use the pheromone traps, you want to put them far away from the problem that the, the Japanese beetles are attacking the, the plants. So all of the uh, bugs go that direction. Otherwise, you can go and look at phylumbioproducts.com. They have an organic um, granular application to get rid of or kill the grubs that are in the soil. That they, and that's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Yeah, they, it, it works. You need to look at it if you've got Japanese beetles in your, in your area. Uh, it'll greatly reduce the population. Uh, would you say, so this is a comment, that you're supposed to plant your bulbs, um, tulips, during a full moon, and that goes for fence post roofing, too? Well, we planted, we did our, we uh, side-dressed our garlic last yeah. week on video with the Ivy Organic 6 Macro uh, yeah, it's Fertilizer. Yeah, 6 Macro Fertilizer. And we found that the garlic that we had planted last year had all, most of the bulbs had pushed up from 2 to 3 inches below the ground. Uh, now, we don't know how true this is, but this was a comment that came in uh, through that video and indicated that possibly you would plant it on a full moon, and that is an indication that it pushes these things up out of the ground. Never heard of it. Now, we've heard the the uh, gardening method of planting by the moon, but mm-hmm. we've never looked into any more than just the, oh, we heard that term type of situation. So, I don't know. It may be something that uh, we need to look into, and that may explain why those particular bulbs pushed up out of the ground. Will white butterflies affect my radishes? I've heard yes and no. I'm trying to decide if I need to cover them or not. 
All right, the radishes take 18 to 25 to 30 days to reach maturity. The white flies may affect a little bit of the growth of the greens, but they won't affect the bulb because of that quick growing cycle. If you do feel that it's necessary, you can cover them with a frost cloth to prevent the uh, butterflies from uh, the, uh, and other insects from uh, affecting your radishes, but uh, leave them exposed, you'll be just fine. Last week we had Joel Carson on the program, author of the Straw Bale Garden book, and here's a question about it. If I stack bales one on top of the other to get an elevated height in order to grow in, do I have to condition both bales, and could I put off condition or planting the bale if I've already conditioned it if the weather, weather doesn't cooperate? Well, yes, uh, you could hold off on planting, but it would be best if you could kind of time it out to once the 14-day conditioning process is over to plant right away. Secondly, if you stack one bale on top of the other, it's only the top bale that needs to be conditioned. But do keep in mind that the weight will compress the bottom bale, so you might want to consider looking at using a pallet or some type of other elevated means of more structure support than just a bale on top of a bale, because it could get too heavy and tip over. This question is from Sam and Tom near Detroit. We are looking to invest some garden space for perennials. I have a small urban backyard. We just bought a house and we are thinking about strawberries, asparagus, and berry bushes. Since we don't have a lot of space, is it a smart move to grow perennials that will take up a permanent spot in our yard for many years? So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local healthcare professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hi, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today we've got a question from Sam and Tom near Detroit, which is a really good one. How much of your space in your garden do you commit to perennials, and how much do you commit to annuals? Growing perennials is a great way to have a crop that can produce for many years, with usually some minimal upfront investment. But here's how I tend to think about garden space allocation. What do I want the most out of my garden? How much space can I give up for several years? What kind of options can I use to make that space more efficient? What does it what does it take for my ground? You know, what does my ground really do well at? And then what do I like? Sometimes you can be really efficient with stackable containers, things like lettuce and very short season annuals. You can move those up to your deck and commit some of that space to perennials like berries or strawberries or or even asparagus. Plants like berries and asparagus do tend to take patience and lengthy commitment, so that ground can be tied up for several years. But make sure you do your homework, get them planted early enough so they've got a chance to establish, and you'll have a crop that can produce for a long time. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that... The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is... Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up on the program next week, do not miss it. Tell your friends. We're going to talk about plants that you can grow in partial shade. There's over 40 to 60 different vegetables and fruits that you can grow in partial shade. We're going to go over some of the more popular ones or least known about ones that you can do in your backyard, as well as those bad social media garden tips. We'll tell you the most popular ones that are wrong so you do not do it, as well as Ellen Zakos. She is the author of Backyard Foraging. We're going to talk about plants and that you can eat that's in your neighborhood that you were not even aware they existed plus your garden questions that's all next week Mission, miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety you can do that by going to the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com website clicking on the radio tab for full in studio video and podcast form of this show as well as go to your favorite podcast providing website and search the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show or podcast and they'll come up all season 1, 2 and currently season three until next week for holly baird i'm joy baird and we will see you in the garden
You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communication Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.